I've had a number of people ask me to do a MorphID video where I say everything that I'm seeing in a snake to identify certain morph combos. And it's a great idea for a video, but I haven't done it yet just because I'm not great at identifying morphs. But we're doing one of those videos today because I've got a tricky clutch and I'm using my favorite Morph ID guy. Hey little one, you're so handsome. We're gonna find out why that is today. Welcome to the green room, I'm Bob Bledsoe. This is the inspector and this is Lucille and they just made some beautiful babies. Ken, do you wanna guess what morphs the babies might be? I don't know, yellow, lemon, white splotch, turd something? Nope, okay, that was fun. About two and a half or three years ago, I introduced the inspector on this channel and I explained that we were gonna to try to prove out some of his genetics. There are a number of possibilities with him, but it's difficult to tell because he's just kind of a yellow snake with some patterning. So it's taken this long, but we finally have a clutch that the inspector has sired. Now I picked up Lucille because she is just a pied and any babies from her with the inspector are gonna all turn out het pied, but from a visual perspective, she's basically a normal because the inspector doesn't have any pied genetics in him to create a pied. When I purchased this snake from Garrick DeMeyer, he told me that he had been holding him back because he wanted to prove out his genetics because he had some weird stuff going on. But he sold him to me as what he knew he had, which is banana, inchy, and orange dream. He said that he probably was super inchy, he possibly was super orange dream, and he could have fire and or pastel in him as well, but it's just difficult to tell. So there was a lot to prove out, but now we have the inspector's genetics separated across nine babies that tell the story of what we're dealing with here. But even separated out, banana makes things difficult, so I still need some help. When these babies crawled out of the egg, here's what I knew I had. Five male bananas and four female non-bananas. The inspector is a male maker, and if you don't know how the banana gene works, it's sex-linked, and I did a video of it uh, that you can watch up there. Or maybe up there. No, I don't know. Whatever. I did sex all the babies just in case there was a crossover event and they all turned out the way we expected. The other thing I expected was that all the babies would come out inchy because I was pretty sure that the inspector was super inchy and he is. All the babies came out inchy. That's easy to see because you get the banding uh, along the pattern instead of alien heads and then you get the thicker eye stripes. Plus it brightens, inchy brightens things up a little bit. The biggest way to tell though is that banding across the body. The other thing I could tell right away is that all the non-bananas were orange dream. Look how orange they are. But not having hatched out a banana clutch, it's difficult for me to tell what's orange dream in a banana or not. Also, there were some snakes that came out a little bit brighter and they had a very similar head stamp to what the inspector has. So I was calling that fire and I figured that the inspector probably proved out fire but I needed some help with that. I needed some help with the orange dream thing. And that's where Austin comes in. You may know Austin from Mutation Creation or his own channel, King Austin. He has a ton of experience IDing hundreds, thousands of clutches. And he also seems to have a really good eye for what certain genetics do when mixed with other genetics. He had some really interesting things to tell me. Austin, thanks for being here, man. Well, thanks for having me, Bob. So here, here's the thing. Uh, when I watch morph ID videos. I'm not a, I'm not a morph ID guy, even though everybody asks me to ID their snakes. I'm just not good at it. I'm more of a behavior guy. I love morphs and, and what they do. And I love the science behind it, but I'm just not great at IDing them. But it seems like when you ID morphs, like you have a ton of experience, you've been looking at them for a long time. You see tons of clutches each year, but it also seems like you've got an eye for it. Like there kind of seems to be kind of a talent that you have to have for IDing the things, right? Uh, it's just a lot, a lot of practice, man. I appreciate that, but I do get it wrong sometimes, but I'd say like nine to eight out of 10 times, I'm usually right. Some genes can be tricky with me, like especially the ones I don't work with, like red stripe and some of those newer genes, but the basic genes I already have pat down and just a lot of practice, man. Let's just go through. I know you took a look at some some photos that I shot early. Like I took some photos the day after they shed and now it's been a week and they've colored up a little bit more. So let me just show you. I did the same thing where I, I took the, the group of the non-bananas right there and then the group of the bananas and then I have individuals also. Yeah, we'll do the non-bananas first. They're a little easier. But okay. then to hide a few genes. So looking from the one on the far left, it looks like there's definitely pastel in there. Uh, the head stamp shows it with the edge. You usually get that butterfly in the head. And 
and she's there of course it was a super entry the pairing right yeah so and she's definitely in all these i can see her at the bat going back to that first one i was talking about on the left pass out and she gives you that head stamp and the and she widens the eye bands and then if you look at the actual pattern along the back how clean it is that's the and she working with the orange dream together and just looking at how clean it is and how orange it is I definitely say you have orange green pastel and Enchi in there at least. And then if you were to go and keep going with it, I say fire is in there as well, just because how bright it is compared to the other ones. And just right. how clean the back is again. So I'm gonna say firefly orange green Enchi for that one. Cool, cool. Now when when I when I bought the mail from Garrick DeMeyer, he told me he said, you know, it's probably a super Enchi, it's possibly a super orange dream. Uh, it might be fire and it might be pastel. And he goes, I doubt it's pastel, but it could be. And I said, yeah, I mean, I, I looked at the snake and I was like, yeah, who knows? I mean, it's just a yellow snake. Yeah. And uh, so I kind of wasn't thinking pastel, but I don't know how to tell pastel from fire. And maybe as we, as we go on, maybe there will be an yes. opportunity to. Yeah, I could actually tell you right now, because if you look at the head here, and there's actually one more, I believe, that has fire in here. It's going to be the one on the far right. If you look at the head on the one on the left, it's very blushed out and almost looks like an eraser was taken to it. Right. That's what happens when you have pastel inside of stuff. You use the erases the head pattern. When you have fire, it actually enhances the color in the head. It makes it brighter. So if you look at that other one, you can see how much more it glows the head without being white and looking like it was erased. Mm -hmm. And that fire also tends to go and like fade the pattern out a little bit. So if you look at the pattern on the one on the right, you can just see how like faded it is inside of some of the blacks. You got those oranges coming up in the middle there. And those are all from the fire. And the pastel would just come in and make it brighter and more yellow rather than fading it out. So would the one on the bottom be a fire also? Because it's got the, the faded. I mean, it doesn't have as bright a head stamp. Yeah, so Orange Dream and Fire together give a very reactive. Almost looks like a desert ghost in some ways. So Everything in this picture has orange dream. Orange dream also can, uh, helps the head, like enhance the head staff. Since there's no fire, it's not enhancing it as much as the one on the right. But the bottom still has a little bit of the head staff. So I would say there's no fire in that one. Because even the color is a little more saturated in orange. You could, with this picture, the one on the right is a little bit more faded with tones. And it looks a little more tan colored, which the fire helps a lot. But Head stamps also come with orange dream as well. So having orange dream and fire together is super reactive, like what you're seeing on the one on the right. But the one on the bottom just has the orange dream and the enchi, which is just really brightening up the head, but not as much as if it had fire in it. And then I'm going to go and say that uh, the one on the right is an orange dream fire enchi. And then the top and the bottom to me look very similar. The top looks like it may be fire just because it's very similar to the color on the right. But the head is not as plushed out as the one on the right. So at least it's an orange dream entry, the one on the top, possible fire. And the one on the very bottom, I think it's pretty safe to say it's just an orange dream entry. Right. Yeah, the, the one the one difference that I notice about those two is the, the orange dream entry, the one on the bottom, the blacks are black, whereas yeah. it's it's browns on the one on the top. Yeah, the, that's why I'm thinking there's probably fire in there. It's just a little hard to see from this picture. Maybe when you pull up the individual picture, I'll be able to tell a little better. But I'm going to say that there's at least the one on the left is a pastel enchi orange dream fire. The one on the far right is an orange dream fire enchi. The top is at least orange dream enchi, probably fire. And the very bottom is going to be an orange dream fire, orange dream enchi, sorry. So let's look at number seven individually really quick. Yeah, so that's definitely the same one. I could tell with the banding in the back. Yeah, you have a lot of those blushed out blacks especially towards the lower half of the snake the head isn't as bright as the other one but you can also get something called polymorphism where there's two of the same genes don't look exactly the same a little bit of uh, difference between them but i think this one's pretty safe to say it's an orange dream fire entry from this picture i can really see the flaming coming up from the back there the tan colors and just how bright the orange is overall okay awesome let's get to the group and photo 
of these bananas. We're going to quickly do this Horde of Keepers Patreon scroll, and then we'll get back to Austin IDing the clutch. By the way, these babies are all spoken for at this point. As you may know, that's one of the perks of being on Green Room Python's Patreon. You get to be on a waiting list for snakes when they hatch. You know, I often talk about the tangible perks, the t-shirts and stickers and extra videos and stuff like that that you get, but there's now a new thing that Patreon supporters get to take part in, and that's Horde of Keepers only Dungeons and Dragons games. Because as it turns out, we're all just a bunch of nerds. There are now several games going on at once over on Discord in the Horde of Keepers secret channels. And they're super fun. I participated in the first one that we did and am going to be excited to jump back in as soon as I'm traveling a little bit less. Here are the channel sponsors that it would be great if you can support because they are supporting this channel and they're also supporting you because look at these discount codes. All right, let's get back to this clutch ID. See, bananas are always tricky. Uh, you can have two with the exact same genes that look very different. There's some saturation from the banana. And like you said, it, they look a little different than the first pictures you sent me. So um, looking at this, we'll start off in the top left. I'm going to say there's pastel in that snake. Just looking at how washed out that, that head stamp is, it looks again like there's an eraser to it. So I'm going to say that one is a pastel enchi at least. And then if I'm looking down at the pattern a little bit more, especially towards the tail, you, right above that middle snake, you can see that there's a couple of dots inside of the dorsal. So those dots are very common with Orange Dream. And you can actually see that throughout most of the snakes in this picture, they have those dots in the dorsal. And that's just a really good sign for Orange Dream, as well as having the pattern below it. You can see how they all chain together and drag. That is also another attribute of Orange Dream. So... That one looks at least to be a pastel, enchi, orange dream, maybe even fire as well. But there's another one there that I definitely think has fire. So okay. that one, I'm going to say is pastel, enchi, orange dream. Okay, awesome. and that one, that's this one right here. Yeah. So you can see that orange in the tail too and the... Yeah, that's the orange dream fighting with the banana there. The banana wants to go and keep it very clean when the orange dream is coming in trying oh, orange dream also cleans it up the orange dream is trying to get those colors to come out but the banana sometimes mutes it especially with the past element and then if we look at the one directly below it to the left side that one really looks like a firefly if you just look how much more washed out the colors are and how more they look very like pale compared to the one on the top especially like you see how near the dorsal it has the yellow still but as the bands come down the sides you can see how much more washed out there uh -huh. that's a really good sign you have fire in that one so i'm gonna say that one is at least a pastel fire enchi and then i do think you might have the orange dream on top of that as well because again you have those dots in the dorsal pattern dragging towards the tail and just the cleanliness of the pattern is a really good example and yep okay that's that's that there one it is. yeah you just see how it's so yellow and saturated near the dorsal, and as it's falling down the sides, how tan and pale it gets. That's definitely from the fire in there as well. And you can still see that butterfly head stamp right in the middle of the head. That's with the pastel and the enchi. And the fire is also helping enhancing that, making it a lot less uh, a lot less yellow. It's just keeping it very white. And then if we go to the bottom middle, that right away, I can see pastel in there again. You have that head stamp with the butterfly. Enchi's in there because it's super Enchi. Orange Dream is there all day with those little dots in the back. And this one could also possibly be fire, but once again, polymorphism with the fire inside of the pies, I mean, inside of the bananas, is a lot. But there is, the pale is not coming up as high as the last snake. You see you have a color change halfway down the side. Mm -hmm. That's the Enchi doing that. Usually with fire, it's going to exaggerate it a bit more. So I'm going to go and say this one is just a possible fire and just a pastel and she orange dream and then possible fire as well. And we'll go up right next to it on the bottom right. I don't see any pastel in the snake whatsoever. Uh, since you sent me last, the oranges in the dorsal are really popping now, which also makes me think that there's no pastel at all in the snake. Pastel will kind of hide those oranges like the last two snakes that we saw, the last three snakes. And... Just looking at the pattern, how pale it is, I'm definitely going to say it's an orange stream of fire and she, and she with okay. the pattern all day. Just how clean it is, the eye bands, the banding over the back. Orange stream in there, definitely cleaning up that pattern, giving you those orange dots on the dorsal 
as well as dragging the pattern towards the tail and the fire in there reacting with the orange tree and making it very, very pale and very bright. Right above it, that looks like a pastel orange tree. See, it's a little bit hard to say. From this picture, it kind of looks like it has pastel, but the last picture you have, I, you sent me, I have it right over here, and I'm actually mm -hmm. using it for a little bit of a reference. Mm -hmm. With that exact same snake, I didn't have as much of a head stamp in it. It might just be the camera angle for this one. Let me let I, me let me grab that one. That one's going to be number. Uh, let's see, that was one. It's by number two, I think. Yeah. So that one right away, it looks like a pastel anchi. Right away, if you look at there, it looks like a little bit of that butterfly head stamp on the top still. Once again, the yellows in it are very yellow on the dorsal, but the sides are not as yellow. So I'm going to say that this one looks like a pastel, enchi, orange dream, fire, but doesn't look as clean as the last one does. So this is the only snake right now that I'm questioning orange dream in, but it still does look orange dream to me. So I think it might be a case of polymorphism here. Cool. Yeah. My, I mean, my guess is that the sire is probably a super orange dream. Oh, I would say so. Like, it looks like every single snake in this clutch has orange dream. Even this one has aspects of it, but sometimes you get really great examples of orange dreams and some that are a little bit less. But this is still a beautiful looking snake and I, I still see the orange dream in it. It's just not as clean as some of the other orange dreams. And in this clutch, you got some very clean orange dreams, especially with the ones with the fire in them. Yeah. Dude, that was amazing. That's exactly what I was looking for. I've had um, a n I've had a number of requests for videos where I explain what I'm seeing in the snake, which is what you're really good at, and I appreciate you doing here because I would love to do those videos. I'm just not good at it. So, yeah. and and I don't want to put out a video, uh, you know, on something that I don't where I don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah, no, I, 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 even me, sometimes I want to stay away from doing those videos because I don't want to be wrong, but any info helps people, right? So I appreciate you having me on here, man. Cool. Yeah, we'll, we'll definitely do it again. Well, dude, thank you so much. Really appreciate your help, Austin. Man, that was great. I really appreciate Austin. So I've been calling the inspector a banana inchy orange dream who's probably super inchy. And he turned out to be a banana super inchy super orange dream firefly. Firefly is the combination of pastel and fire. So I feel like I got a pretty good deal on him. I noticed Austin was unwilling to come here and identify these snakes in person. Do you think maybe he chose to do it from the safety of the internet because he knows the danger he'd put himself into if he stepped foot into the green room? He lives in Canada, like 2,500 miles away. I bet he does. I'd feel safer if I lived 2,500 miles from here too. Kent, do you understand that, I mean, it's not like, you know what? I don't think we have time for this conversation. Got him. Anyway, thanks again to Austin. You can follow him on all social media at King Austin. That's also his YouTube channel. And you can also obviously see him on Mutation Creations YouTube channels as well. So these babies are a bit feisty. They don't bite, but they're extremely vocal. There's a lot of hissing. They like to let me know how they feel about things. So we're working on some socialization with them, which is going to be in a video coming up, maybe next week or the week after. But if you want to learn more about Morph ID, check out this video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.